All right, hey you guys, John Britt here. Hey, I'm adjusting my camera to get it just right. Okay, so I, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a calculating the unity molecular weight or formula of a glaze recipe uh, from a batch one. So this is the batch is leach white 4321, which we talked about in the previous video. Uh, and, and so I'll do that here with a few backup things. The reason I think this is important before we start talking about uh, Glaze software that you can use is because if you know the way this, uh, these numbers are generated in the software, it'll help you to uh, manipulate your glazes better, okay? So what we're doing is we're creating a unity molecular formula so all the fluxes will be in unity, they will add up to one, all right? Before we start, I'm going to show you uh, this little chart I am using is right here on the board and I have it here. You can get it from Val Cushing's book. Oh, that's the bad. That's not a good uh, cover. Here's a better cover. Here's Val Cushing's book. I took this class in 1994 or so, and so it's been a little while. There's several ways to do this. This is just the way he does it. Um, okay, so what we first have to talk about, because we're dealing with atoms, they're very hard to count individually, so we count them as groups. It's called a mole. So we need to know how many moles of each of these things we have. And a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. So that is a billion trillion. Okay, so it seems like a difficult concept, but it's really just a word to mean a large group of atoms. So it, it would be similar to saying, go to the store and buy me 12 eggs. Well, the simple way to say it is get a dozen. Or I need to ship a gross of something. That's 144. So in the same way we get used to this terminology, you get used to moles just meaning a very large number of atoms. Okay? Another concept that we need to know is that when we get materials in ceramics, we often get several things. So for instance, if I am getting kaolin, I also, in there, I get alumina, and two silica every time I get one kaolin. Okay, and that's why we'll write one for alumina, two for silica. When I get a feldspar, I'm going to get one flux, one alumina, and seven silica. Okay, and I've written that out over here. So because we're going to need to do Custer feldspar. And so you can look up the unity molecular uh, formula for feldspar in this book. And you can also find the um, molecular weight, okay? Uh, but the way that they determine that those numbers, 1 to 1 to 7, is that it's 0.69 potassium, 0.31 sodium, that adds up to 1. And then the alumina is 1.05, but we round it to 1. And the silica is 7.04, and we round that to 7. Okay, so that uh, will become useful later when we're trying to figure out how many uh, moles of alumina and silica, etc., are in this recipe. Okay, I think that's pretty much what I got for setting you up. I've written the molecular weight of whiting or calcium carbonate here, kaolin, and silica. All right. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we've got our, form, our, our recipe here, 4321. The next thing we want to do is get the molecular weight of each ingredient. So, you know, what's the molecular weight of silica? 60. What's the molecular weight of whiting? 100. Kaolin is 258. Now you would just look these up or Google them or something. And then the molecular weight of feldspar is 615. I've written it up there. Okay? So that is our weight in grams, our molecular weights, and now we want the molecular equivalent or the number of moles. And what you do is take the first number, 40, and divide it by the weight, and you'll get a number which is 065. 
Okay, that, the easiest one is silica, because if, if a mole is 60 and we have 30, that means we have half a mole of silica in this. So we write 0.5. And this one is going to be 0.2, 20 divided by 100. And then our kaolin is going to be 10 divided by 258. And that's going to be 0.39. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to say, okay, I got this chart. I've shrunk it down a little so we could do this demo. Uh, how much silica do I, am I getting supplied with silica? 0.5 moles. So I'll write that over here. 0.5 moles. I'm going to write every source of silica in this recipe and then total them up. Okay, so then I might say, how much uh, calcium do I get from whiting? This is whiting. I have two moles of whiting. And so I go over to my calcium column and I write 0.2. Okay, now we're going to do, when we get kaolin, I remember I said we get one alumina and two silicas. So usually what I write up here is I write a one and a two so I don't have to think about it. And I have point, so I have zero. 039 moles of alumina and then I have twice as much silica so that's 0 0.78 uh, let me make sure I got it right yeah that's right 78 okay now we're going to do the same thing with feldspar whenever we get feldspar we have one flux one alumina and seven silica. So I usually write one, seven, and one. And the reason they write KNAO in a feldspar is because you always get sodium and potassium and you can't split them up so they, and they act similarly in a recipe so they just group them together. Okay so for that if we have zero six five moles of feldspar we're going to have 0 0.65 moles of potassium and sodium. And since this is a 1, 0 0.65. And then I'm going to just multiply that by 7 and get 4.55 of silica. Okay? So that is our distribution of moles of uh, things. So now I'm going to total everything up. 0, 6, 5 potassium and sodium. 0, 2. Um, what's this going to be? 104. And this is going to be 1.033. Okay, so those are our totals. Now we're going to write those totals here. I know it's kind of redundant, but this is just showing you how he does it. And I'm going to do my uh, whiting at 0 0.2 and my alumina at 0 0.104 and my silica 1.033. Now, in order to get uh, this into unity, what we're essentially doing is retotaling the recipe uh, with the fluxes. So we would just total the fluxes up. We're going to get 0 0.265. And then we're going to divide each thing by that. So I'll take 0 0.65 divided by 0.265. And then when I do that, I'm going to get a number 0.245. And then when I divide the 0.2 by 0.265, I'm going to get... 0.755. Now, the thing here is then you're going to divide, excuse me, you're going to divide everything by that total of fluxes. So everything is in proportion to the fluxes, in relation to the fluxes. So you will divide this and this, and you'll get two other numbers, which will be 0.39 and 0.3. 8, 9. Now you can round those off if you want. We can round this off to 2, 5. And we can round this off. 
and we can round this to nine, but we'll just leave it like it is for now. Okay, so that is now the formula for the 4321 recipe. And that's what happens when you type it into Glazy. It will generate this for you. And then you become familiar with this. What this tells me is all my fluxes are now going to add up to one. So 25% of my flux is potassium and sodium and 75% is calcium. So we'd say this is a high calcium sodium uh, glaze. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to bring this camera over so you can uh, see a little better. We're going to uh, show you the limits for things. So what we do, I, sorry I dropped something there. Um, what we do, these are limits from Val's book. Okay, so you're going to take this, these numbers here, uh, alumina and silica, and we're going to look on this grid. And you see how we have alumina and silica? So we're going to do 0.39 here for alumina and 3.89 for silica. And we're going to have a, our recipe is essentially going to be right here. Sorry about that. That is showing you that it's within the limits for a good cone 10 glaze. Now, these limits don't mean it's going to always be perfect, but what they do is tell you that it could be uh, the best chance to be a good glaze, a good functional glaze. All right, so the next thing we want to do is look at our limits of our other oxides. So those other oxides are uh, sodium and potassium and calcium. So let's do calcium, 0.75. According to Val, if you're, with, if you're between, uh, the high end is 0.8, and we're at 0.75. So that's good. We're st if we went over 8, we might have trouble with running or rivulets or something. Okay, so that's good. And then we're going to look at the potassium and sodium, 0.25. And you see, this goes from O. Oh, five to five with the point there so we are actually right in the middle at 0.25 so that's a good amount of uh, potassium and sodium for this glaze all right the reason i'm pausing here is i think we've done it i'll just tell you uh some other things you may want to think about when you're doing glazes is like talc has three magnesium and four silica or dolomite has a magnesium and a calcium and these some of these are variable like you'll sometimes get dolomite to be like 0.48 magnesium 0.52 calcium so and it's also a variable material so uh Remember that when you're doing glazes, you have to kind of be familiar with all the oxides. All right. Hey, wow. I think I did it. I think it was clear, I hope. And uh, just rest now. And tomorrow I'm going to work on uh, more on limits and the stull chart. Okay.